When you go to the store to buy that next movie you can't wait for, you still find two different options, DVD and Blu-ray. Which is better, and why do we still have both after so many years? This episode of Premiere Prep is sponsored by EditShare Lightworks. The Lightworks editor has been at the forefront of film editing, having been used on many of the finest films in cinema history. Use coupon code FILMWORLD2017 at checkout to get 40% off your entire Lightworks purchase. Links are in the description. Hello everyone, it's me your host Micah Pendleton and welcome to Premiere Prep. So DVD and Blu-ray have been living together on store shelves for over 10 years now, and Blu-ray is undeniably the superior quality product. But there was a point where DVD was top dog and actually was quite groundbreaking. So before we get into a head-to-head -head battle, let's go ahead and have a quick history lesson. For a very brief bit of history, DVD, or the Digital Versatile Disc, was developed way back in 1995 by Philips, Toshiba, Sony, and Panasonic. While it was not the first optical disc that was capable of distributing video, it was the first one that was truly economic for your everyday household slash consumer. Before the disc was fully developed, there were two groups that were working to create their own version. You had the Multimedia Compact Disc Camp backed by Philips and Sony, who would later come to call their format Digital Video Disc. And the Super Density Camp, backed by Toshiba, JVC, Hitachi, Time Warner, Pioneer, Thomson, Matsushita Electric, and Mitsubishi Electric. Both camps were developing their own formats for the disc totally independent from each other, using different technologies. Eventually, the guys from the Super Density Group consulted IBM about the file system to use on their disc. Well, IBM came to find out about the MMCD Group. Not wanting a format war, they eventually formed what they called the Technical Working Group, or TWG, with Microsoft, Dell, Sun Microsystems, and Apple. An ad hoc alliance was soon formed between IBM, Compaq, Microsoft, and HP. They boycotted both the MMCD and the SD format and said they would only accept one format to be used across all systems. So both groups came to a compromise and created a single format, and thus the DVD format was born. Now what about Blu-ray? The development of Blu-ray actually started only a few years after DVD hit the general market, with the first tech show appearance in October of 2000. The technology was originally called DVR Blue, and in early 2002, the project was officially named Blu-ray Disc. But before Hollywood Studios would accept Blu-ray for movie distribution, they wanted a more secure encryption system than the failed Content Scramble System, or CSS for short, which had been used on DVDs and compromised since 1999. Once 20th Century Fox joined the Blu-ray Disc Association's board of directors, the new Digital Rights Management System, or DRM, was developed. After two more years of work, the first batch of movies were introduced to the consumer market in June of 2006. For a short time, Blu-ray was in competition with HD DVD, which is not the same as DVD, just HD, by the way. It was really a whole new technology. The battle didn't last long, however, with all major studios ditching HD DVD for the superior Blu-ray by May of 2008. At this point, Blu-ray became the standard for HD movie distribution. This episode of Premiere Prep is brought to you by EditShare Lightworks. Lightworks is Hollywood-proven video editing software that is available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's been used on movies such as Hugo, The Aviator, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Wolf of Wall Street, and The King's Speech, just to name a few. With Lightworks' wonderful new user interface, it's ready for any type of project you throw at it. 
It's also built on FFmpeg, which allow Lightworks to read nearly any video format. Lightworks even works with RED footage, ProRes, and DNX HD, and has 10-bit color capabilities, multicam editing, hardware I.O. support, many built-in effects, and far more as well. Go to LWKS.com and use promo code FILMWORLD2017 to receive a 40% discount off your Lightworks purchase. A link is in the description. And please make sure you tell them that FilmWorld sent you. Also, a big thank you to the EditShare Lightworks team for one, their amazing piece of software, and two, for sponsoring this episode of Premiere Prep. All right, class. My name is Mr. Sherman. I am in for Mr. Zemeckis. I mean, Pendleton. That's what I mean. So today our subject is the DVD, or the Digital Versatile Disc. It's used for movies, which we all love. We're also going to be talking about the Blu-ray, also for movies, which we also love. Now, starting with the DVD, it has a resolution. <coughs> it has a resolution of 720 by 540. But you might see a slash here. That's because there's two different things. Two different things, all right? Two different. 720 by 480 is for the NTSC format. Don't ask me what that means. I can't remember it right now. But <coughs> the 720 by 576, that is for the PAL format, or more eloquently known as PAL. The codec is MPEG-2. Okay, MPEG-2 is, that's the format. Now, the, the space, uh, it is capable of doing 4.7 gigabytes per layer. That's per layer. All right, so that is the gist of DVD, very basically. There's a lot more that goes into it, but for your guys' sake, I won't be going into it today. Now the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray, uh, this is a very more advanced product. Uh, it's capable of doing a lot more. It is a 1080p resolution. That is for standard. Let me write this, yeah, that's for standard. Dead. Whoever put that line there, it's way too short. That might have been me. I'm not going to specify. We don't need to get into specifics yet. But that's for the standard DVD. It's 1080p. For 4K DVD. Uh, I'm sorry. Blu-ray. Where's my mind? Blu-ray. There's standard and 1080p, and then there's 4K. And 4K is obviously for the 4K. Blu-ray. Little redundant, I know, I know. But for the codec, <coughs> the codec is going to be the VC1 or the AVC codec. Right? Good, you've got that. Very good, very good. Now, the space here. The space is a lot larger than the, than the DVD by quite a great amount. It's so great that it is actually 20... Five gigabytes. Twenty-five gigabytes per layer, and I believe it is capable of up to four layers. So that is the basic differences in specs between the digital versatile disc, not digital video disc, and the Blu-ray with the 1080p version and the 4K version. Now, if you excuse me. I was in the middle of a game of putt-putt. So I have devised a very scientific test. I'm just going to watch the same scene of Mission Impossible on DVD and Blu-ray. Decide which I like better. Here we go. So 
So after watching these scenes on both DVD and Blu-ray, Blu-ray is the undeniable winner. Now before you go crazy in the comments about how it's a 100 inch screen and it's not fair because it's so big, well, that doesn't matter. The point is, Blu-ray can be scaled up to the size and still look good, whereas DVD falls to muddy, distorted pieces. The question is, which is better? And obviously, Blu-ray was going to come out on top. Now you may be asking yourself the question, if Blu-ray is so much better, why is DVD still around? That is a good question. I really can't answer this question myself. The biggest factors that I can say is that DVD tends to be three to five dollars cheaper than Blu-ray, and players in computers, cars, and more almost always take DVD, but not necessarily Blu-ray. This is really a shame because Blu-ray is just so much better. I personally only buy Blu-ray anymore, and am one that thinks that DVD should end and end soon. What do you think? Do you still buy DVDs? Do you think DVD is in its last days? Let me know in the comments below. That concludes this episode of Premiere Prep. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like it if you liked it, share it on social media, and of course subscribe to the Film World YouTube channel if you haven't already. Next episode, I'll be showing DIY options for light gels, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember to live your life one frame at a time, and I'll catch you next time.